Okay, so um, let's mute everyone. I see not everyone's muted. Okay, um, just to finish off the just before the two dots, um, the Gemara, the Gemara's final answer is that Rav Ashi said tapka. So we're talking about a unique case where the tunnel still has functionality left, but not um, not sufficient functionality to be identical to the original one. You can still use it to heat food on, but more as a hob than an oven. Um, it's a flat piece now, and you put food on top of it when it's horizontal, rather than food inside it when it's vertical. And the question is, um, to what degree is this uh, called uh, uh, um, malacha? To what degree is this still considered the original malacha? Is it the original malacha because you're using it for cooking on, or is it uh, not the original malacha because you're, you're, it's too different? That's that's the, the specific machlokas. Now, the pashtus, this machlokas has no nafkim in the because we paskan, that kol shvarim, that oisin, me'in malacha, it's enough. They don't need to do me'in malachtom. So, um, in which case, there'd be no reason for the Rambam or the Shulchan Aruch to bring this halacha. So again, just to remind you uh, from what we what we saw in the last uh, in the last year, um, the Rambam brings in. Uh, I printed both the Rambams. The Rambam brings uh, in Perak Tafei Halacha your base Kol Hakenim and Tzolim Meshabas Shinisbarka Dalas Says Then and so then he carries on. And Ben Shne Kol Hakenim and Tzolim Meshabas Shinisbru Ben Kodem Meshabas Ben Meshabas Shivrim and Tzolim Hushia Oisin Mein Malacha. So Raman Paskin that in Me'in Malacha is enough, that, that we, in, this is the previous handout sheet. But the Raman also brings in Perek Havav, Halacha Vav, um, the Halacha of Shiori Mach Tzolois, and the Halacha of Shiori Begotim, and the Halacha of Shivrei Tanur. Why does he bring Shivrei Tanur? The Maskona, Shivrei Tanur, the whole Chiddush of Shivrei Tanur is where it's Maisa Tapka, and it's a detail about whether it does Me'in Malachta or not. But we Paskin, you don't need Me'in Malachta, it's enough that it does Me'in Malacha. So again, all you need for a shever, a broken shard of an original keli not to be mukta, is that it has some functionality. It doesn't have to have the same functionality as the original utensil, in which case the whole discussion of main um, is irrelevant. And I, I think the answer is, as we said previously, that the chiddush of the Rambam is that even though a tunnel is a klishim melachta issa, when it breaks, it can become a klishim melachta la heta. It can get it become, can become less mukta than the parent because the original tunnel was. The only functionality was Issa, and now it's got a functionality that's Heta. That's uh, that's the suggestion um, that that, uh, um, that 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 to make over here. Is, is that all? Is that reasonably clear? So there's no chiddush in the idea that the broken shard of the tunnel is not muksa. As long as it has functionality, that's enough. That's the same as the general Mishnah. The chiddush is that it becomes less muksa than uh, previously. Um, I'm going to ask another question now, which we're then going to put on hold till the little sugya that we, we focused on today. Which I think someone asked um, a couple of Shiro back, uh, possibly Martin or something, I, I don't remember. Which is that how can the broken shard of the tunnel not be mukta? Surely it was Mukhuba Lakarka and it became a building. Um, so again, we saw the Gemara discussed the tunnel is a little unusual in that it's not a KD that you can move around or take in your hands. You've, the whole use of a tunnel is that you fix it to the ground. And because of that, there's a whole series of Gazeera Sokosovs around how a tunnel becomes Tomei or not, which the Gemara either did or didn't think you could compare to Muks, as we discussed previously. But the fact is that the tunnel was unusable as a KD until it became detached. And a Shab on Shabbos, you're not allowed to uh, detach it from the ground. And surely, therefore, it should be muksa, much like, uh, um, I don't know, a plant that gets detached from the ground would be muksa on Shabbos, because it's not usable on Shabbos. You can't move it around on Shabbos. You can't detach it. Now, we could answer that we're talking about where it broke before Shabbos. And therefore, all we're looking at is functionality. We're not looking at whether you could use it on... Uh, on uh, on Shabbos, but this doesn't appear to be the case because the Gemara says that this is a machlokas Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Huda, which in others it's referencing us back to our mission on Kuf Chaftal on the base. On the Kuf Chaftal on the base, we had the machlokas Tanakam and Rabbi Huda, which the Gemara calls Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Huda, as Shivrei Kedem, and the Gemara discussed is this talking about a keli that broke on erev Shabbos on Shabbos, and it says it's talking about a keli that broke on Shabbos, 
And the Gemara on our Sukkot says that that's the Machlokas, the same Machlokas over here with Tunnel as that Machlokas over there. So clearly we're talking about a tunnel that broke on Shabbos. Why does our Gemara only bother about functionality? Why doesn't worry about the fact that it was Mechuba on Erev Shabbos and um, and uh, and therefore Mukta because it's simply unusable on Shabbos uh, because it's un, it's unmovable. So let's put that question on hold and move on to the next uh, the next the next sugya. Um Ravina, Kaman Matal Sudin and Haidna Kisoy to Tanuri de Masa Machia, the Enohem Be Sahiza, Kaman Kabdelza Min Yakov. So I'm not I don't want to over get into um into the next uh it's too much into the, the nitty-gritty of this sugya. But there is a machlokus at the end of our uh at the end of our peric on um on Duff uh Kuf uh Khafov Omud uh Kuf Khafov Omud Bayis. Um, as to lids uh, of Kalim that uh, that do or don't have a handle. So um, a lid which is handleless um, doesn't have it does it or doesn't have sufficient functionality to use as a KD. And Ravina is basically saying that's that's what's going on over here. So the the, the memory that the Gemara is analyzing. Is about Shivri Tunnel and whether you can move Shivri Tunnel. That's the first half of the memoir. The second half of the memoir is a tradition that Rabbi Yossi records in the name of Rabbi Yossi Yaakov that, um, that the Kisoi of a tunnel doesn't need a base yard. So, how does this Gemara over here, which is a Chiddush of Rabbi Yossi Yaakov, that the lid of a tunnel doesn't need a handle? Fit into the sukkah of Kuf Chaf Vav Omud Beis, where it's a machlokus about where the lids need or don't need handles. So Tosfos references that later Gemara, and Tosfos says that the Gemara didn't need to say that our practice nowadays to move lids without handles is dependent on Rabbi Yosi and Yaakov. It could have said it's like Rabbi Yosi over there who says the same thing. In other words, Tosis is basically saying the two sukkahs are identical. They're both dealing with a generic question of whether you can have a, a lid um, which is movable or not, a lid which has a handle or not, and whether it's mukta or uh, not. Incidentally, is the rabiosi over there the same rabiosi over here who brings the tradition from Elazo and Yaakov? And therefore, maybe that's what explains it. Maybe this is literally an identical view. Let, let, me, let me just summarize, sorry, just to give a clear picture. In Shas in general, there's a conceptual problem, which is often you have the Gemara discussing similar issues in different places. And there's always a problem, how do you put the two together? And are they referring to the same thing or not? So sometimes, and in many ways, that's the job that Tosa set himself to do, which is to bring parallel sugyas and work out how they fit in with our sugya. Um, Tosa over here, basically says the two sugars are identical and Rabbi Yezim and Yaakov over here and Rabbi Osi over there effectively come out the same thing. And when we want to explain our minhag that Ravina evidently knew that, ma- that we do move, ha- we move lids without handles, the Rabbi Osi over there is the same as Rabbi Yezim and Yaakov over here. And the Ramban discusses whether this is the same Rabbi Osi or not, and therefore maybe where they can go into speculation as to whether uh, the two rabbis are identical, and and that's really what's going on over here. Okay, now what this is going to force us to think about is lids. Lids are interesting things. You may not be aware that lids are interesting things, but they are interesting things because they have a second degree functionality. The real functionality you want is the utensil, and the lid is there to protect or, or stop flies flying into the contents of the utensil to stop it splattering, to assist it to do its job a little bit better. And that's why the Gemara is interested in lids. So we've had a discussion about Kalim. Now we want a discussion about Kisso Kalim and how they fit in with uh, with their role. And maybe a lid without a handle isn't a good lid. In other words, the whole point of the lid is the ease of... You, you can look at a Kalim and say, okay, but I can use the Kalim to cover something. But the whole, if the whole role of a lid is to lid away, to be able to be taken off and, and removed, how does a lid work without a handle? That's the conceptual title of this topic called lids. 
And the real place where that topic is discussed is in the dust time, and we'll get there. But it came up, Agav, in our Bryce, which the Gemara quoted. The Gemara quoted our Bryce because it was interested in talking about ovens that break. But at the end of the Bryce, it mentions that the lid of an oven that doesn't have a handle is also not mukta, according to Rabbi Lazim and Yaakov, as quoted by Rabbi Yossi. So Tosas asked, well, how does that fit with the main sugar that deals with lids over there? Is it the same? And Tosas basically says it's the same. That's the conceptual title of this sugya that we're um, that we're learning over here. Now, the Gemara there gets into a, uh, a, really the Gemara there gets into a discussion, not just about lids in general, but about a keli that is mechubal akaka. So this brings us back to our original point, because what's interesting about a lid of a keli that's mechubal akaka is that the keli itself has become attached to the ground and therefore ceases to be a usable, grabbable keli. So do we say that the lid is subservient to a mechubal keli and therefore also is mukta? Or do we say that the lid, now that it's it's broken and detached, or even an unbroken lid with a, a base achiza, is not mukta because it's, it's its own independent entity? So again, it's it's forcing us to think about the relationship between libs and kalim. To what degree is a lid uh, a, a peripheral or tofel to a kali, and therefore if the kali is mechubal akaka, the lid also is mukta, or to what degree, since the lid is not mechubal akaka, it's just put onto something that's mechubal akaka, is it not mukta? That's, again, part of that discussion um, later on. Now, the Rambam, um, which I hope I uh, printed, in Perik Hafei Halacha Yod Gimel, um, addresses, really, a problem over here, which is that the... Um, which is that there's a contradiction perhaps between the sukkahs. Let's look at the Rambam in Perik Chafei Alach Yudkimel. Kol kisei ha-kelim netolim b'shabbos, v'hu shiyesh teos keli aleim. A lid is not mukta on shabbos, as long as the keli is not mukta, as long as the keli is... Do you, do you want a hard copy or... Uh, yeah, okay, fine. The lid is not mukta on shabbos, as long as the keli is not mukta on shabbos. However, what does Torah's keli mean? That it's not just a keli, meaning it's a slave of human beings, it's set aside for human utility. It's got torus keli. A torus keli means it's it's not part of the structure of the ground. It's something I can use and take in my hands. Um, if it's a keli that's mechubah akaka, then it depends. Depends whether the the lid has a handle, in which case we can view it as its own independent thing or not. And if you have a a, a pit dug dug into the ground, they used to dig pits into the ground as storage space, for example, because it was slightly cooler. Then he says, Kisoi tunnel, the lid of an oven, even though it doesn't have a handle, you're allowed to uh, um, to move it. Now, what's the chiluk between a tunnel and a everything else? Uh, effectively, what the Ramam is doing is he's pasking like both sugyas. The sugya, our sugya says that a kiso of a tunnel has the same din as a kiso of a keli, and therefore it can be moved even though a tunnel is mechubal akaka. The Gemara later says that a tunnel cannot be used, uh, sorry, the lid of something that's mechubal akaka cannot be used. How do we resolve these uh, um, these two sugyas? So the Rishonim all address this. And just to help us have a structure of the um, of the flow of the sources, um, the earliest source that really deals with this is the um, the Rebbe of the Rebbe of the Ramam, a few days back, who is the Rif. And I didn't print the Rif because all the sources quote the Rif that I printed, but the Rif basically has a contradictory pasuk. And uh, this question is flagged by all the Rishonim, um, who ask that... The rift paskins at the ends of the period, like the Tamakama, that Kiso Kalim, that are Mechubal Akaka, needs a base Achiza. And here the rift paskins, like Rebbe Lezim and Yaakov, that the lid of a tunnel does not need a base Achiza. Why does the rift do that? Because over here, Ravina clearly says that Balach is like Rebbe Lezim and Yaakov, because he says that's our practice. But the problem is, at the end of the Sugya, the rift paskins, not like that, the rift paskins that you do need to handle. So how do we put these two sources together? What do we do with these uh, two sources. We have basically a, a contradiction in the sugya. So just to summarize the structure of what we've said so far, Tosfus lines up the two sugyas. Tosfus says that Rebbe Lezim Yaakov here and Rabbi Yossi over there are, are really the, the same. But effectively, that's what comes out from Tosfus. The Rambam and the Rif seem to want to have their cake and eat it. Over here, they pass that the lid of a tunnel is not mukta, even though it doesn't have a handle. And over there, they pass that the lid of anything that's mukta is mukta and 
does need to handle. Now, in terms of the flow of history, um, the Rivard is, is was a, a very, very serious mission. Who unfortunately, we lost much of what he wrote independently. And most of what we have is only his footnotes on other sources. And he basically writes a critique on the Ramam in the Rivard, in which he raises this stira, and he gives an answer to it. The Balhamar, who's a contemporary of the Rivard, both of them are provincial, the Shonim living in Provence, um, and wrote a critical work on the Rif, the Great Rif, basically says this is a, a mistake that left the pen of the Rif, because this is a contradiction between two sugyas. Source 7 is a Milchamas. The Milchamas, it comes from the Rambam. The Rambam didn't just write his Kedusha Rambam on Shas, but he also um, sets himself the task of defending the greats that preceded him. And here he wrote a defensive work on the Rif, to answer the Balamora's attacks on the Rif, and he called that work the Milchama Sashem, the War of God. I'm coming to defend the great Rif. And the Rashba, who's a commentary on the Gemara, is a Talmud of the Ramban, and therefore also records this. So I, I just want you to understand the, the alignment of uh, the sort of traditions um, going on over here. And they all ask this stira between the two sugars, or more accurately, between the Psak of the Rif, which ends up as contradictory in how we align the, uh, the sugars. Now, one answer to this question, which the Rivers gives, is maybe we're talking about a tunnel tolosh. We're talking about a detached tunnel, not an attached tunnel. And therefore, we've resolved the problem of Mechubah. Now, the weakness of this answer is that the Rif and the Rambam and the Gemara will just talk about tunnel stum. They don't mention this condition that we're talking about a tunnel tolosh, but it does resolve this question. Now, the Rivers says that for many years, I wasn't willing to accept this answer. Because how can you dare suggest that we're talking about uh, um, we're talking about uh, a tunnel uh, tolosh? And he says the language of the Rebbe is Ken Hayinu Sovrim Yomim Al Yomim Atchazati Rishi Rosa Brisa Al Shivri Tano Yashon Shen Kachol Akenim and Tano Mechotza that broken tunnel is like any kedem Al Malka Sheeinu Mechubarin Ayi. It must be the Brisa is talking about non Mechuba. So let me try and join the dots together. On the last sukya, before the two dots, which I said at the beginning of this year, I said, we're just going to finish up the last sukya. We asked a question in which we said, how can the Gemara say that the broken pieces of the tunnel are not mukta? A broken kadi is not mukta. That, that's fine. That's a reasonable thing to say. That's a Mishnah. We've been learning this now for a whole omud. That broken kadi, if they still have functionality, are not mukta. But here we're talking about a mukhuba kadi. A kadi that's mukhuba, of course, is mukta because you can't move on Shabbos. You can't detach a tunnel from Shabbos. That's the malacha of Boina and Soise, building and dismantling on Shabbos. So a broken tunnel that's attached to the ground, how can you move? Says the Rybert, from that very question, I'm proving that it must be, after many years, it occurred to me, I realized it must be the ratio of the Brysa, the beginning of this memory is talking about a detached tunnel, in which case the Edels of Rabbi Yossi in the name of Rabbi Lozman Yaakov is also talking about a detached tunnel, in which case I've resolved, one second, in which case I've resolved the contradiction in the Sukhyas. That which our Sukhya says that the lid of a tunnel it doesn't need a base achiz and we pass like Rabbi Lozman Yaakov is because we're talking about a detached tunnel. The Gemara later is talking about things which are mechub and akaka, and that's a resolution of the contradiction in the Pesach of the Ramam, the contradiction of the Pesach and the Rif, and a contra the, the resolution really of, of a steer and the two Gemaras, why these are two split up Gemaras. So just to summarize, we've got the structure clear. Sosa said Rabbi Yossi later is the same as Rabbi Lozman Yaakov here, and the two Sukkahs are talking about the same thing. Fine, you can say that. However, the Rif doesn't evidently hold in the same Sukkah, nor does the Ramam, because they somehow Pesach like both Sukkahs. They Pesach like the Sukkah over there, that uh, you need a handle on a, a lid of a built-in structure. And they pass them over here, like Rebbe Lezav and Yaakov, who says, you don't need a handle on the lid of the tunnel. Answers the Rivers, we're talking, after many years, it, I realize that we must be talking about a tunnel that's detached from the ratio of the Brysa. And therefore, it is reasonable to say that the continuation of the Brysa is also talking about a detached tunnel, not an implanted tunnel. And that's my answer to the uh, question. Now, there were three hands up, so we'll go one by one. Gary, first. Yeah. 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 Is that the same as not attached, or does it mean it was attached and it's going to be attached? Oh, I don't know um, either. Yeah, it's a good point. I'm not sure. Uh, could be it was a tunnel that was never fitted properly. It never never attached to the ground when it was when it was placed in the ground. Um, or maybe it got detached, and that's part of the breaking process before Shabbat got detached. And I don't know. It's a good, good point. Um, yeah, you're next. Yeah, then. The, the Gemara itself says that it's attached. Does it say that it's attached to the ground? Is that one of the um, one? One of the readings in the sugya. Yeah. So first of all, Ashina Moscona rejects that. 
And secondly, it may be about being faced in the ground, but not attached to the ground, not on the floor. Maybe you haven't, Rashi mentioned that part of the process is you sort of plaster it to the ground. Maybe that doesn't occur over here, yeah. Yeah. Right in his answers, Timmy Mom, the word Yashon then in the Mishnah. A word that the, uh, the, the Rambam doesn't bring himself. Yes. So it's like explaining, it's saying, I understand it, it's in the way the Mishnah is written, but the Rambam doesn't bring that word. I mean, he doesn't explain such an important word. Yes, the Rambam, it doesn't, it aligns nicely if that was the reading of the Mishnah. Okay, so so it, this is a problematic answer. It's not hinted at in the language of the Rambam. The Rambam just says tunnel or the the litters. He doesn't say I'm talking about a, an unusual situation or a tunnel that's tolish. So it, 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 it's 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 a difficult answer. The Raga says in, in the Gemara I can get away with it because if you touch out the Gemara, it must be talking about a particular type of tunnel. But it, it is a bit sosom. It's, it's what we call an akimta. It's saying that that which sounds like is a general rule is only a particular rule, certain sort of tunnel. Yeah. It's, it's a problematic answer, but this is what the Rivard says. I particularly like this Rivard because you see, you see also the hard work of the Rivard that you know the years of toil that he uh, um, that he uh, um, days upon days. So this is like a lengthy, it's nice just to see retrace the sort of hard work that the Rivard uh, put in Sukkah. Either way, this is the Rivard's answer to the uh, um, to the Rambam's question. Yeah, that's right. 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 Uh, um, they all seem to be assuming we're talking about a tunnel uh, um, because they all do ask this question, right? The, the Muhammad, the, the Ramban, the Rashba, they all ask this, uh, they all ask this question. Um, and they all, um, they all do seem to understand that we're talking about a tunnel, which is, uh, which is uh, Muhubba. And, um, the Rambam, by the way, in the Muhammad does mention this possibility. For those who went through the Muhammad, the Rambam does mention the possibility that we're talking about a tunnel of Tolosh, but he, uh, um, he he doesn't say that this is Muhammad within the Brayser itself in order to answer this, uh, this, uh, this 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 question. So we're left really, if we don't go with the Rivers, with two questions. Question number one is why is the tunnel not Mukta because it's Muhammad Akaka? And question number two is how do we resolve the contradiction between the two Psakim of the Rif? And the uh, two psukim of the Rambam, in which they seem to misalign the sugyas. Sorry, yes. Yes. They don't deal with this question. No, no none of them mention it. It's the writer who mentions it. Yeah. Yeah, and other Rishonim don't bother with the question. I don't know. It's a problem. So, 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 just to summarize, correctly, correct this point up, by Rafi. We have two questions on the sugya. One is there's a steer in the suck. These two sugyas seem to be identical. Tosis bites the bullet. He says, yeah, they're the same sugya, and you can cross the line them. But the Rif and the Rambam evidently didn't hold their identical because they're happy puskening like one in one case and one in the other case. That's question number one, and that's dealt with by the Rishonim, the Rivad, the Milchamas, the Bat Rashba, they all deal with this when I put the sources. The second question is that um, none of the, other than the Rivad, none of them point out this problem that a tunnel is Mokhuba, and therefore how can you, uh, um, surely it should be Moks and Shabbos because it's it's Mokhuba. So the first question, what I call the second question, the, this question of Mokhuba, I, I, I don't know the answer to the question. The Rivad asks the question, surely it must be uh, um, it must be binyan on Shabbos. How can it not be mukta? You could give various suggestions, but not all of them are very hidden in the in the sugya. You could, for example, say there is a concept of yoshiv and matzah. I think we met this concept before. Of something is is mukta at the beginning of Shabbos because it's unusable, but you know that inevitably over the process of Shabbos it will become usable. Um, it wouldn't it wouldn't be mukta. So you could say, for example, this is uh, with drying clothes. I think we mentioned this, where wet clothes, which are not may not dry on Shabbos, or muksa because they're unwearable. But if you know they're going to dry over Shabbos, then that, even though the muksa status or something is determined by its state at the beginning of Shabbos, that's the whole logic of muksa. That that uh, once it's muksa at Bein so it's muksa for Shabbos because it was set aside for non-use. But if you know that it's going to become usable over Shabbos, we're what's called yoshiv and matzapi. You're waiting and anticipating. We're waiting and anticipating. We do pass on that with with yeah yeah yeah. So the question now is, so it could be we're talking about an oven where you're Yoshev and Matsape, you know it's going to get detached over Shabbos. I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know any, I, I looked in Achronim now, I saw one of them suggested, so I don't, I don't know any, uh, I, don't, I don't know a good answer to the question, it's, it's a problem in the Sugya. But the second question, which is how can the Rif Paskin differently in either case, and how can the Raman Paskin differently in either case, I mainly just wanted to bring a beautiful answer from the 
the Rambam. And the Rambam says that a lid of an oven is just another wall of the oven. It's just another part of the oven. It's different to other lids. When you have a burrow, the burrow is a storage space, and then you want a lid to cover it, to protect it. It's subsidiary. An oven it needs it is putting food inside a contained, insulated uh, ceramic uh, keili in order to heat the food. You need some way to put it inside. So you have an oven door or an oven lid, which is, is open or, openable and closable. But when you close the lid, it's no different to any of the other walls of the oven. It's as senior as all the other walls of the oven. And therefore, it's a mistake to think of an oven lid as being um, a, a, within the sugya of lids. We call it an oven lid or an oven door, but it's not really a door or a lid. It's part of the utensil itself. It serves the cooking process as much as the walls of the oven do. Very beautiful londus of the milhamas. And therefore, he says, our sugya has got nothing to do with the later uh, sugya. Our sugya, in which Rabbi Dezim and Yaakov is mechadish, that you can use an oven lid, is nothing to do with the general debates about lids and subsidiary uses and to what degree they're, 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 if, the, if the parent Katie is muksa, they're muksa, and to what degree they have their own independent use. All he's saying is this is identical to an oven. This is part of the oven walls. It's just a, a movable oven wall as opposed to an immovable oven wall. The Gemara later is dealing with, with lids. Um, but it's such a beautiful terret. It's sort, of, it's sort of hard to move on from it. And, and like so many of the terrets in the Rambam, once you hear it, it's just astounding. So uh, um, this is how the Ramban resolves the sukkah. The riff is beautiful. The Ramram is beautiful. There's no need to spell anything else again. They're, they're making exactly this point. They're saying the kisso tunnel is different to other kisum because it's a lid of a tunnel. You're not thinking clearly. It's not a lid of sukya. It's a, it's a part of a keli sukya. It could be each case you'd have to work out whether it's really a lid or whether it's, it's sometimes a lid is a subsidiary use. The functionality is the object and you just need a lid to cover it or protect it. Other times it's doing the same service as the rest of the pot and therefore it'd be different. A lid of a pot might be different because a lid of a pot, the heat source is underneath. You need some metal to stop. What's the point of a pot? Uh, um, a pot is a way of combining two opposite elements. You, you have water which extinguishes fire. You have fire which gets rid of water. If you want to boil something in a pot or you have food which you want to fry, that you want to stop the fire burning it and yet still get the heat. So the lid is, it, the pot is a device to come in between. The lids are something subsidiary. It stops the water evaporating. It stops things getting into the, the, the lid. It, it may do or may not. I'm, I'm saying each case would need its own analysis as to, as to whether the lid is part of the core functionality or secondary uh, functionality. So I, I don't want to make a sweeping statement about it, but all the Rambam are beautifully pointing out is that in the case of an oven, it's as integral to the functionality of the oven as any other wall. It's simply a movable wall of the oven. Okay, so we'll stop here. Um, for Tuesday, I would suggest, it, it, I do think it's worth going through these Rishonim. If, uh, I've tried to lay out what they say. But it's just a very nice sugi in which you see the Rishonim conversing with each other. So I would encourage you to go through the Rishonim, and then we're going to start the new sugi in the Mishnah, and then probably the next year, then we'll be next Sunday. Uh, I'll, I'll see where, where we're up to on, on Tuesday, whether I give a share or not. But I would urge everyone to go through the Rishonim we can't manage, because it's, it's really a beautiful little, it's a small enough sugi that's manageable without getting overwhelmed. And it's uh, it's quite nice just seeing how the Rishonim talk to each other, as it were, and, and debate the same issues. And uh, then we'll start the next circular, the Mishnah, and uh, move on from there. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Have a good day.